yes, I, we are ready. Um, we are chair. Um, today's witness is Mr. Paul Holden. Uh, before we swear him in, can I just check that you have the documents that are necessary for today's hearing? Um, uh, I've got uh, floor funds bundle five, exhibit VV five double one, and with his name. Uh, that's correct, Chair. And then yes. there should be a a file of duplicate spreadsheets in mm -hmm. A3 format uh, as opposed to A4 format. Thank you. And th that's not a, a bundle in its own right. It's merely larger copies of the of the documents that are already in the bundle. Okay. Right? For convenience. Okay. We, we've also arranged a, for a, a screen to be up today. Mm -hmm. um, so on certain of the spreadsheets, which have thousands of entries with very small numbers, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Holden will be able to zoom us in uh, mm -hmm. to, to show them. OK. Um, will that uh, uh, be enlarged larger than that, or it will stay like that? Uh, w when we want to examine something in particular, it can yeah. it can be magnified much oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. much much more than that. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, you uh, will it be before the, the the oath is administered or after that for the benefit of the public? You will just say what his evidence will cover. Sure. Um, um, Mr. Holden will be with us for, for two days and, and some evenings, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he is going to testify about money flows. But today, and possibly spilling into tomorrow, he'll be testifying about the public funds that went into the Estina Dairy Enterprise and what happened to them. Um, to, uh, Starting tomorrow, he's going to be dealing with the offshore kickbacks that were paid uh, into the Gupta enterprise in respect of transnet contracts uh, for cranes and locomotives. And he's going to be tracing that money and, and to an extent what happened to it. It's, uh, we're in the lucky position in relation to Estina that because Part of what happened to it happened onshore. We can access banking records, and what happened offshore was documented in fairly detailed accounting records that are kept on Gupta leaks. So we can account for most of uh, the funds and, and where they went in relation to Estina. Offshore, we don't have powers to uh, gather uh, bank statements from other countries. And so we're much more limited, and so our, our picture is not as clear as it is in respect of Estina. Okay, no, thank you. Please administer the oath or affirmation. Please state your full name for the record. It's Paul Edward Holden. Do you have any objection to taking the prescribed affirmation? I do not. We will solemnly affirm that the evidence is given to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing else but the truth. If so, please raise your right hand and say, I truly affirm. I truly affirm. Thank you very much, Mr. Holden. You may be seated. Thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Holden. I'd like you to begin by confirming the correctness of the statement that you have furnished to the Commission. And uh, Possibly before I do that, uh, I, I need you to make one a minor correction to your report. And can I ask you to turn to page 112 of the bundle? And just for the record, the bundle we are using is uh, uh, floor funds bundle five. That's correct, Chair. Yes, um, uh, unless I mention another number, that yes. will be the bundle I'm referring yeah. to today. Okay. And uh, what page did you say we must look at? 112, Chair. Oh, 112. And there, at, towards the top of the page against the paragraph B, a figure of 
3.1 million US dollars paid to Oak Bay Investment Limited is, is, is reflected. I understand that you need to correct that figure. Uh, can you uh, give the, the chairperson the correct, the correct number there? Uh, certainly. Uh, Chair, the correct figure there is 3.35 million US dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shastrogny, where about is that? Uh, paragraph B, towards the, the that little oh, indented okay. paragraph B, which says 3.1 million. Oh, so that should be 3.3. 3.35, Chair. 3.35. Okay. So it would be 3.35 and then the zeros. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, and, and, and that's dollar denominated, not uh, rand denominated, Chair. Yes. Um, Mr. Holden, we will be doing some fairly microscopic examination of transactions, of hundreds of transactions later on, and every now and then there are typographical errors. Uh, which we may uh, need to correct as and when we come to them. But subject to th that sort of error, uh, do you confirm the correctness of that statement uh, to which I first referred you to at uh, page five of the bundle? I do, Chair, yes. Yes. O of course, uh, particularly this not being an affidavit, Mr. Toskarsen, a corrected page can easily be obtained. And, and to replace this one. Indeed, Chair. Yes, okay. Uh, then, Mr. Holden, attached to your, uh, your, your statement is a, is a brief curriculum vitae. I, I don't want you to, you know, to read it all out, but can you very briefly describe to the Chair who you are, uh, what you do for a living, and what your experience is? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Paul Holden. Um, I am currently working as Director of Investigations at Shadow World Investigations based in London. I have been investigating complex grand corruption um, for the better part of 12 years. I've written five separate books on uh, a combination of corruption-related issues and South African political economy. Um, I have been working at uh, Shadow World Investigations for the previous two years, but prior to that, I worked at a company by the name of Corruption Watch UK Limited, which is the predecessor company to Shadow World Investigations. Uh, and I worked there for the better part of about eight years. Um, I have led relatively complex training for journalists and activists and law enforcement. Uh, I have trained over, I think it's about a thousand journalists around the world um, in open source investigative methods and security training as well. Uh, and I've also taken part in a number of uh, complex financial uh, training exercises as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Holden. And uh, if you go to page 12 of, of, of the bundle, you'll see a report uh, that you've uh, prepared for today's evidence. Can you briefly describe to the chair how this report came to be generated? Absolutely. So uh, initially the report was uh, submitted to, the, to this commission um, as a submission. Uh, it was one of, we, we have made as Shadow World Investigations a total of three individual submissions under our name and one joint submission with our colleagues Open Secrets. We've made two separate submissions on the uh, Stina matter. Um, the first submission uh, provided evidence from the Gupta leaks indicating the extent to which the, what we call the Gupta enterprise, so the broader Gupta family and set of companies, um, what role they played in the establishment and the running of the Astina project. And the second submission uh, is the result of a, an analysis of what was then open source banking information uh, designed to try and trace the disposition of funds that was paid to Astina by the Free State Government and how it eventually was paid to the benefit of the Gupta enterprise. Um, subsequent to that submission, um, the commission... And, but before you get to that, you describe you describe the sources as open source banking records. Can, can you explain to the chairperson uh, what those sources were? Absolutely. Uh, Chair, the sources were um, for the uh, local bank accounts were drawn from attachments that were uh, appended to the asset forfeiture unit application uh, for the seizure of funds. There were two separate uh, asset forfeiture applications to which they attached a range of bank statements. 
Um, and of, there were also a, a series of affidavits, sort of explanatory affidavits, explaining how the Estina accounting mechanisms, mechanisms were operating. In addition to that, there are quite a substantial number of internal accounting ledgers that appear within the Gupta leaks themselves, and we'll get to that in more detail, but those are effectively uh, an internal accounting of what was really happening on the Estina project. That was your submission. Um, the report has been uh, amplified and enriched uh, 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 through your interaction with the Commission. Can you explain to the Chair how that, how that took place? Absolutely. Uh, Chair, there were certain gaps within our knowledge um, due to the fact that certain bank statements weren't available to us as they weren't appended to the Assature for Fujina application and also certain uh, records of offshore and onshore flows weren't available to us because those were held at the time by the Reserve Bank. Um, the Commission very, uh, very graciously pointed out those gaps and filled those gaps with the available documentation they have. Uh, and we have uh, reproduced that we've updated the original submission uh, including the new banking documentation and what that reveals um, into this new report which will be the most sort of up-to-date and complete version of events based on the underlying banking documentation. Thank you Mr Holden. Um, we're now going to move uh, to your report and your report is going to detail uh, banking flows from the Estina project through the Gupta Enterprise. Before we begin getting into that detail, I think we should take some time just to describe both the individuals who are going to be involved and the companies. And in that respect, can I ask you to go to page 20 of, your, uh, of the bundle, where there is a, a, a list of the individuals who will feature prominently in the emails and the banking transactions that we will later discuss. And can you take the chairperson through that list? Uh, you don't need to read it all out, but just identifying each one of these individuals, what role they're going to play, and uh, yes. Certainly. Uh, Chair, the first entry is for Ashu Chola. I'm sure he's been mentioned already in the Commission's evidence. Uh, he was the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Sahara Systems, but was effectively uh, running the vast majority of the logistics of what we call the Gupta Enterprise. Uh, in this respect, he was very important as a facilitator and a director of how the um, offshore funds were to be dissipated, and he was giving direct instructions to the individual who was controlling those bank accounts. Uh, and that person enters as the second entry, which is Sanjay Grover. Uh, he is an Indian national. Um, he had been working with the Gupta Enterprise uh, in a separate capacity for uh, a number of years prior to the Astina project. Uh, around about 2012, based on the Gupta leaks, we can ascertain that he effectively became the uh, Gupta Enterprises accountant in Dubai. And that included um, setting up bespoke offshore vehicles and running their bank accounts on the instruction of Ashu Chola, and also providing a regular update of the movement of funds in those accounts to Ashu Chola and others. Um, he was, I should mention, the uh, sole director of a number of crypto offshore enterprises and a South African entity by the name of Varga Field, um, which was the recipient of considerable funds uh, through the Estina project. Um, the third entry is Ashla Gupta, and she is the sister of the three Gupta brothers. Uh, we mention her because there is, at one point in the internal ledgers, an indication that, that money may have gone to her. So I just highlight her role within the family there. Um, the fourth entry is Rajesh Gupta, also known as Tony Gupta. Uh, obviously, he was central to the entire Gupta enterprise and a director of a number of, of companies within it. Uh, the importance here is that in our first submission, we identified that he was quite closely involved in meeting with various free state officials um, to discuss the Estina project, but also, most importantly, he was being kept abreast of and informed of the disposition of Estina's funds offshore. Uh, and that was achieved by uh, Sanjay Grover's accounting to Ashu Chola, which was then uh, subsequently provided to Tony Gupta. S sorry, Mr. Holden, before you continue, you've been referring to your first submission. Um, do you have uh, FOF bundle six in front of you or available?
I'm afraid I don't, Chair. Uh, can you turn to, uh, sorry, I've lost my reference. I, I believe it's the, if that flag document where the blue tag is. Can you just uh, and give me a reference there? Certainly, that is a FOF-06-004. Uh, and is, is, is that document, that submission uh, by Shadow World International, what you're referring to when you talk about your first submission? That's correct. And uh, just hang on a second, Mr. Chaskosen. So, shall we record that that's a document that's in Flow Funds Bundle 6? It is in, in, in Flow Funds Bundle yeah, 6, and uh, it is at uh, page 4. Correct. Uh, black numbers. Okay, and uh, yeah, okay. And, uh, and if you can briefly explain to the Chair the distinction between that submission and or, or the topic addressed by that submission and the topic addressed by today's report. Uh, absolutely. So the first submission is a, a focus rather on the uh, circumstantial evidence of the role of the Gupta Enterprise in the Astina project, drawn almost exclusively from the Gupta Leaks material. And there, for example, we try to outline um, the, sort of the pragmatic and practical ways in which the Gupta Enterprise was uh, creating the infrastructure through which the Astina project happened, and effectively directing the Astina enterprise remotely. Uh, and that's a distinction from the, uh, the report we're discussing today, which focuses exclusively on money flows. Thank you. Um, I, I took you out of your uh, sequence of describing the relevant individuals. So if I can take you back to bundle five, and you had address Tony Gupta, Rajesh Gupta, if you can uh, go over the page to page 21, uh, there is an entry Shivani Gupta. Uh, can you tell the, the chairperson who she is? Certainly, Chair. Um, Shivani Gupta was the wife of AJ Gupta, or is the wife of AJ Gupta, and I include her on the dramatist person I, as she is also uh, noted as a recipient of funds in the internal ledgers that have ultimately derived from the Asina project. And the second entry on that page is a person by the name of Lin Yu Ju, who also goes by the name of Alex. And we include his name, I, I'm afraid I don't know a great deal about him, um, beyond that there is correspondence between him and certain of the Gupta Enterprise employees, but I include him there as there is a, 50, uh, a payment of $50,000 um, that ultimately derives from the Asina project that is sent to him. The third entry is um, Ashak Narayan, who I'm sure the Commission has heard a great deal about already. Um, in relation to the Astina project, uh, we show in our first submission, which I've just described, um, the very intimate role that he played in uh, running or establishing and running the Astina project on the ground. In relation to this specific report, the thing that is useful to bear in mind is that he appears to be the on-the-ground uh, administrative person or point person for the running of the account by the name of Vargafield, the company of Vargafield, which receives just under 60 million rand from the Astina project. The, um, can, can you mention also his role uh, in relation to Linkway Trading? Absolutely. So he uh, served as a director of, of Linkway Trading, uh, and Linkway Trading was one of the entities that received um, a very large sum of money derived from the Astina project, uh, and that was quite famously invoiced against the costs of the uh, Sun City wedding. Uh, then Evan Tuck? Yes, Evan Tuck, was a, he's a senior Sahara Computers employee. Um, he is involved in a number of uh, sort of logistical discussions, and the reason why we include him in this dramatist person is that uh, he was involved in trying to troubleshoot the importation of equipment from India, um, and that equipment was imported uh, using funds drawn from the Astina project. Uh, the second to last entr entry is uh, Suresh Titeja. He is a former employee of the Gupta company, um, JIC. Uh, for the majority of the period of time under consideration here, he operated in India, 
and acted as a um, as a an additional accountant and and uh, manager of of uh, Gupta Enterprise Funds offshore. Uh, and then the last entry here is Kamal Vasram, um, who we will be dealing with quite extensively in the money flows. Uh, he was the sole director of Astina PTY Limited uh, up until, I, if I'm not mistaken, 2016, uh, in which, uh, when he is replaced. Um, the Gupta Leaks record showed that he was engaging with the with Sahara computers from at least 2008 onwards. Um, from 2011 onwards, um, he starts to invoice and is paid invoice a monthly amount uh, against um, against the Gupta enterprise, including against Linkway Trading, um, of which Narayan was the director. Uh, and the first invoices from March 2011 onwards, as we discuss, uh, he provided the, um, uh, he acted a, a, essentially as a front man for the Athena project. He was always based in Johannesburg. He also acted as the front man for a number of other uh, companies through which um, the capture of, of certain funds from the Free State occurred, including Sunbay Trading. I'm not sure if the Commission has heard evidence in relation to uh, Sunbay Trading and um, the laptop issue, but so that can be addressed at another point. Um, very importantly, he also opens up a, a vast series of personal bank accounts at the Bank of Baroda and Standard Bank, um, through which uh, much of the laundering of the Estina funds takes place in South Africa. Um, very briefly, uh, to touch on the Sunbay trading computer uh, issue, uh, because we will see later that some funds go there, uh, uh, literally no more than a minute, can you tell the Chair what the Sunbay trading computer uh, project was? Absolutely. Um, the Sunbay trading project was, uh, very briefly, a project in which the, uh, the Free State Government ordered a number of laptops to be given to needy learners. Um, the order was placed via Sunday Trading. Um, it appears from the Gupta leaks that the point man uh, between the Free State Government and Sunday Trading at that point was actually Ashok Narayan, um, who was receiving confirmations of payment. Uh, we've been able to establish, and we do set out in our first submission, um, that Sunday Trading was effectively merely providing computers sourced from Sahara and computer source from Sahara at a significantly reduced cost to what they charge to the Free State Government. Sorry, can you just clarify that? They, <laughs> who was benefiting here, Sahara or the Free State Government? What, where was the reduced cost? Um, so the reduced cost was, uh, if I was to explain this better, uh, Sunbay Trading purchased laptops from Sahara Computers and then effectively doubled that cost when they sold it, or well, doubled the price, I should rather say, when they unsold to the Free State Government. So the prejudiced party here is the Free State Government, which if they had directly contracted with Sahara, would have paid half the price. And the beneficiary here is Sunbay Trading, although we do know from the Gupta leaks that the majority of the profits that were earned on this particular transaction were ultimately transferred back to Sahara Computers. Thank you. Um, that deals with the individuals. We now turn to the companies who are going to be involved. And can I ask you to go to page 28 of the bundle? Uh, and can you, uh, at page 28, you deal with the four most significant uh, offshore companies that we are going to encounter? And can you take the chair through those, uh, the, through those companies? Who are they? Absolutely. So the first company uh, is Accurate Investments, which is entry 3.1. Uh, the registration number is provided there. It is registered uh, to a PA box, PO box address in the UAE. And we, the only known shareholder is uh, Sanjay Grover, who, as I pointed out earlier, was effectively the Gupta Enterprise accountant. Um, I then also provide a list of uh, banking facilities for accurate investments. I should mention that paragraph 16, um, I'm surprised that it appears it was actually removed, so it should be corrected. Uh, paragraph 16? Uh, so page FO, F05029, I think there might be a version issue here, but um, that paragraph was, is deleted, paragraph 16. So, so paragraph 16 must be removed from the report. Correct. Ms. Chair, can I ask you to strike a line through paragraph 16? Uh, 
then uh, uh, I've asked you to, to deal with the offshore companies, but I, 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 I see, of course, in your report, you're dealing with, you're dealing with companies domestic and mm -hmm. offshore alphabetically. Let's stay with the report so that uh, the chair doesn't have to jump around. Um, so, Chair, we, we're talking about local and offshore companies that are going yeah. to be involved here. Before we leave Accurate, uh, w when you come to talk about transnet money flows, uh, we'll be focusing on some offshore deposits that went into the Accurate account. Can I ask you now briefly to describe to the Chair uh, what you see in the transaction records of Accurate uh, that gives you an insight into the nature of the company? Absolutely. Uh, Chair, Accurate Investments is, uh, I would describe as a, effectively uh, merely a money laundering vehicle uh, that exists within this uh, collection of four separate companies. Um, it receives payments, the majority of payments into and out of this account almost universally are derived from other Gupta Enterprise companies offshore. Uh, it is only used in 2013 to receive payments from one transnet related contractor. Uh, and then to immediately dissipate out those uh, funds to other Gupta Enterprise companies offshore. Uh, it is also used in this particular instance to, uh, as a vehicle through which uh, funds from the Estina project are eventually commingled into a single, singular account from the Gupta Enterprise to be paid into South Africa. It is really, uh, it's mostly just a placeholder um, through which funds are being flowed as part of a laundry process. <laughs> Do you see any recurrent expenses in the accounts of accurate investments? Absolutely none. Can you then uh, tell the chair about Aerohaven trading? Yes. Uh, I guess Aero it Haven. wouldn't have had many employees. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, there are absolutely no employee costs or infrastructure costs associated with uh, accurate investments. Um, as we discuss, we'll discuss in relation to Transnet. Um, the company has no online profile and has no physical infrastructure either. Okay. Um, th th thank you, Mr. Holden. Can we, can we move to Aerohaven? Absolutely. Aerohaven is a company registered in South Africa. Uh, the registration number is provided there as 2008-014743-07. Um, the known shareholder uh, is Ronika Raghavan. You had a 100% shareholding. I'm sure Ranika Raghavan has emerged uh, during testimony before. Uh, Aerohaven held shares in a vast array of companies. Should I go through each single one? No, I, th I think they're set out uh, under paragraph 18. Okay. Um, and this is anything that you want to emphasize particularly there. Uh, the only thing I'd emphasize here is the extent to which Aerohaven is, is integrated into the Gupta Enterprises local entities. Um, and the sort of, uh, it, it, it's a very sort of uh, central cog within the, the local laundry. Uh, we address um, Aerohaven because it's a, an important part of the laundering of Estina funds, as we'll address later. Uh, then we come to Estina itself. You can be very brief there because <laughs> we, uh, we, we've heard lots of evidence around Estina. Uh, what, what may be useful for today's uh, purposes is, is to go to paragraph 21 where you describe the banking records of Estina that you have, uh, that you have analyzed? Absolutely. Uh, Chair, at, at paragraph 21, I've uh, included a table of, of all the known bank accounts operated by Estina. Um, the primary account that we'll be focusing on today is the first entry, which is the current account that was operated by Standard Bank with the account number 31086 um, that account is used uh, until it is replaced by an account held with FNB uh, in 2015 to receive and dissipate Estina funds. Uh, and that was paid into and received into the business account 62505 73906. Um, turning to the Bank of Berlin, there are two uh, Trust account, well, a money on call account with FNB and a unit trust account with Stanlib. Um, which are used as uh, parking places for funds for a very temporary period during the laundering of funds. And thereafter, there is a vast array of um, Bank of Baroda accounts. Uh, they include the main, the primary Bank of Baroda current account, um, which I refer to throughout as, as 02 255. Um, but the full account number is 920202502525. Uh, and then below that, there are 14 fixed deposit accounts that are opened and held at various times. 
at the Bank of Baroda, and then three loan accounts. Um, Chair, it, it might be worthwhile at this point to just to indicate, uh, I'm not sure if this has come up in, in testimony before, um, but the reason why I refer to the account as 02 slash 255 is because the Bank of Baroda um, internal account allocation system uh, indicated a current, uh, the type of account by the, uh, the, sixth let, the sixth number in the account number. So in this case, 920202, 02 indicates it's a current account, whereas the one below that, 9202203, 02 the 03 refers to a fixed deposit account and 06 is a loan account. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Can you then uh, go to Fidelity Enterprises, and we're now offshore again. Absolutely. Um, Fidelity, Fidelity Enterprises is uh, registered offshore, also known to be the, the sole shareholder was uh, Sanjay Grover, and the only known director, Sanjay Grover, um, although obviously he was taking instruction from Asha Chawla and others. Uh, we have identified six different Fidelity offshore accounts that we are aware of, uh, with Standard Chartered Bank, the Bank of Baroda, and Mashrek Bank. In both of those cases, um, they were operating US dollar and uh, Durham-denominated accounts. Um, and we see throughout the laundry that there's quite often a, a laundering of funds through different denomination accounts, be it Durham or US dollars. Uh, of the offshore companies, Fidelity is the only one that is then subsequently integrated into the onshore laundry. Um, and it holds uh, shareholding in a number of different um, local Gupta companies. That includes a 10% shareholding in Mabangela Investments, uh, alongside uh, Tony Gupta, uh, Dudazani Zuma, Era of Trading, Mufazi Investments, Ashuchola, uh, of which the directors were Dudazani Zuma and Tony Gupta, uh, a 20% shareholding in Mabangela Resources and Energy, um, 200 ordinary shares out of 1,301 shares in Tegeta Resources and Exploration, and a 25% shareholding in Tegeta Resources PTY Limited. I understand it also has shares in Oak Bay. That's correct. So, I may have uh, misread your paragraph. No, that, uh, I'm just double checking my file. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, <laughs> I'll stop making suggestions. Um, then we, we come to Gateway, uh, another UAE based company. Can you tell the chair about it? Absolutely. So, Gateway, like uh, Fidelity and Accurate before it, um, is registered in the UAE. Um, it is registered to Sanjay Grover, who is the known director and the known shareholder. Uh, it operated a number of different bank accounts um, with three different banks that we know of, Standard Chartered, Bank of Baroda, and Mashrik Bank, again, in dollar-denominated and Durham flavors. Um, it held shares in one uh, Gupta Enterprise company, but based abroad in India um, by the name of Alpha Computers. Sorry, it's registered in, in Singapore, apologies. Um, and it purchased the shares in uh, Alpha Computers from SES Technologies, which is based in India and is one of the Gupta Enterprises' main vehicles therein. Uh, Gateway Limited, as we'll, we'll show in greater detail later, was the primary means by which uh, the offshore laundry first received funds from the Astina project and from where the Astina funds were eventually dissipated. And... Uh can you, can you talk about the relationship between Gateway and Vargafield? Absolutely. Um, Vargafield, um, as we'll describe in a bit more detail later, uh, was the recipient of just under 60 million rand from the Astina project. Uh, the sole director of uh, Vargafield was Sanjay Grover, um, although we do know that Ashok Narayan was operating an account, uh, an email account on behalf of Vargafield. The internal accounting records for the... Uh, the offshore enterprise uh, indicates two entries um, titled Vargafield Gateway Shares 120 Rand and Vargafield Gateway Shares 130 Rand, um, which I have come to believe uh, indicates that uh, Gateway held shares in Vargafield or bought shares in Vargafield. Can I ask you to turn to page 341 of that bundle, bundle five? Uh, uh, what was the page number, Mr. Three, 341, Chair. 341. Uh, 
and we'll get to this document in a bit more detail later, but can you briefly first tell the Chair what, what is the document that we're looking at? Uh, certainly. This is, um, Chair, this is probably the most important single document in relation to the offshore flow of funds. Um, this document is an internal accounting ledger of all the uh, movements of funds into and out of the four primary offshore companies. What we're looking at here is the, uh, the, front, the first sheet within that spreadsheet, which provides an overall summary of the movement of funds into and out of those accounts uh, between March 2013 and the end of February 2014. And I assume that you want to refer to the bottom entry. Yes, before we, before we uh, get to the bottom entry, can you tell the Chair how, how we came to be in possession of this document? Absolutely. The document is attached to uh, an internal, internal mail correspondence within the Gupta Leaks. Um, the, the document was attached to an email that was sent uh, by Ashu Chola to Tony Gupta, sharing this particular um, spreadsheet. Uh, for some reason, it had the, the subject line forward visit observations. Uh, from the trail of emails, uh, we could see that Ashu Chola received that email and that spreadsheet um, from other employees within the Gupta Enterprise and Suresh Tuteja in particular. Thank you, and, and we will we'll, we'll take the chair to those specific references later. But for present purposes, uh, can you go to the references uh, three and four from the bottom of page 341? Absolutely. Uh, Chair, as you can see there, there are the entries, Vargafield Gateway Shares, 120 Rand, and then below that, Vargafield Gateway Shares, 130 Rand. Uh, uh, hang on, Mr. Holden. Uh, I am at page 341, but I remember that I had you earlier on mention a, a, a date, I think March, but I can't see a date here. I think you... And Mr. Charles Carlson have mentioned something that I can't see either. Uh, it, the page is 341. Uh, Chair, we'll, we'll, we'll come to the emails to which this was attached, which is where the date comes from a, a oh, little later. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so when you mentioned the date, I was trying to see where, where uh, exactly. Uh, sorry, there, there, okay. there is no date on, on the spreadsheet itself. Yes, okay. But, the, but the, document, the page that uh, what we are looking at is the is the page that has as the first item Mod Azim Gen Trading LLC at the, at the top. Is That's that correct. Right? That's correct. Yes. Okay, all right. Okay. Yes, um, we may continue. Uh, but if one goes to the third last entry, or the third last yellow entry on the page. Yes. Uh, where, where we have got a rent and reveling global. And that uh, highlighted yellow? Oh, no, no, no. The, the bottom highlighted yellow section. The last bot uh, ye highlighted yellow section. Oh, okay. Uh, and can you just direct the chair to the entries that are, are, are relevant to Varga Field and Gateway? Absolutely. So um, the fourth last and the third last entries say, uh, the first one says Varga Field Gateway shares 120 rand. What's useful to note there is that if you scroll to the right, um, the column indicates 13.98. Uh, okay, Mr. Holden, you'll have to be patient with, <laughs> certainly with me. Because, uh, okay, now when you say 130 rand, I'm looking, so that's that AR, that's the South African rand. That's correct. Yeah, but the way it's written <laughs> with a capital Z and a small letter AR, one wasn't sure, I wasn't sure. Okay, so now I see where you are, yes. Okay. So, so just for the record, it's Vargafield Gateway shares 120 ZAR. Mm. Uh, and then if you, t if you follow the columns to the right, you'll see an entry 13.98 in brackets. Yes, I can see that. Uh, and that is a dollar figure, that's a dollar equivalent figure for 120 Rand. And the importance there is that because the, uh, the entry is in brackets, we know that the money oh, okay. was, was no, no, paid I'm, out. I'm sorry, Mr. Holden. No, I think I was looking at the wrong line. I was looking at, you are on the fourth line on the highlighted, on the last highlighted shade. That's correct. So the fourth yes, last I, highlighted. I was on the third, but the name is the same. But the amounts are different. Correct. You are looking at the one for 120. Correct. And then when you go straight, then you go to 13.98. That's correct. Okay, all right. 
And uh, Chair, the, the important thing there is that because it's in brackets, that's the uh, indication that money is paid out of the offshore laundry. So we know that money was paid out of these accounts yes. to buy the shares. Okay. And that applies for both entries. Okay. Uh, and, the, uh, and the price of the shares? Um, so the price of the shares uh, are 120 Rand, 120 ZAR, and 130 ZAR. The 120 ZAR is equivalent to $13.98 dollars. 130 ZAR is equivalent to $15.03. Um, thank you, Mr. Holden. Can I now take you back to the uh, company uh, sequence? And so the, the 120 ZAR is 120 as is, not like 120,000. It's just 120. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and we're now at going back to page 35. Uh, the next company you address is Global. Yes. So, Chair, that, this is a Global Corporation LLC. Um, again, operated in, um, in Dubai. Uh, the known director is Sanjay Grover. I indicate their known director, Shivani Gupta, and I, I should clarify that how I understand that to be the case. Uh, please do. Um, so we have, uh, it, it's very difficult to get uh, share registers from Dubai and the UAE, unfortunately, but there is correspondence in the Gupta Leaks um, uh, trove in which uh, there is an accounting issue that has to be dealt with uh, in India, and in that correspondence it emerges, they state that um, Shivani Gupta had shares within Gateway, um, I think partially to explain why she had received funds therefrom. Um, can you make a note at, at some stage, I, I think having mentioned that we need to uh, produce the relevant uh, correspondence and, and maybe it, tomorrow we, we, we can hand that Same. in as an additional exhibit. Uh, global, you were, you were going to move to. That's correct. Um, so we see there uh, that global corporation we know chair uh, operated accounts with four different banks uh, registered in uh, Dubai, at Standard Chartered Bank, uh, the Bank of Baroda, Mashrek Bank, and the National Bank of Abu Dhabi. Uh, again, they were operating US dollar and Durham flavored accounts. Sorry, uh, you, you had in fact, <laughs> you had in fact dealt with global. Uh, Linkway. Yes, uh, Linkway Trading is uh, an account registered in uh, South Africa uh, with registration number uh, 2007-009012-07. Um, the known directors are KWE Taser uh, and Ronica Govender. Um, and the known shareholders... So, sorry, can I stop you at Ronica Govender? Do you know who... How do we know Ronic... Uh, <laughs> by what name is Ronica Govender more commonly known? Ronica Raghavan. Sorry? Uh, Ronica Raghavan, Chair. Oh, the, the one who was a 100% shareholder in one of the entities we have dealt with. Exactly. Okay. Mm. Uh, we know that uh, Liquid Trading holds shares in Islandside Investments, holds 53% of the shares there. Um, Sorry, I'm getting a little bit mixed up there. The shareholders of uh, Liquid Trading are Islandside Investments, which owns 53% of the shares, Ronica Govender, which owns 25% of the shareholding, and Prograt Investments, which owns 22% of the shareholding. I'm aware of two different accounts uh, operated by Linkway Trading, which I referred to in my evidence. Uh, one was an account operated with the State Bank of India, uh, and the second account was held with NetBank. Uh, your next entry is Oak Bay. Um, I think we all know who Oak Bay is, so uh, you even detain the DCJ, uh, the chairperson there. Um, and then we come to Varga Field on page 38, who you've talked about already. Is there anything you want to add in respect to Varga Field? Um, at this point, no. I, I, it might be useful just to record its registration number on the record. Um, so it's registered uh, with CIPC. It was registered in 2012, which was the year in which the uh, Stina project um, was initiated. Um, and the registration number is 2012 uh, forward slash 101734 slash 07. And the known director.
an overview of what you found in your investigation. And for that, can I ask you to turn to page 109? And maybe it would be uh, simpler to start at the end where you talk about aggregate numbers and then get uh, to the individual tranches. So can I ask you to, to go to 111? And at, page, at the top of page 111, you, 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 you summarize what the aggregate uh, amounts paid into Istina by the South African state or by the Free State Government were and what, what happened to that money. Can you take uh, the chairperson through that big picture overview that starts at the top of page 111? Uh, absolutely. Uh if I may, could I actually, uh, there's a slight distinction between figures between page 109 and 111 that might be useful to draw out, if we may. Sure, certainly. Um, at page 109, uh, at paragraph uh, 286, I record the total amount that the Free State Government paid into Estina PTY Limited, which was 280 million rand, 202,652 rand, in eight separate tranches between the 9th of July 2012 and the 5th of May 2016. And then returning to page 111, you can see the figure is slightly different. Um, it is 7 million rand more. And that's uh, 287,220,534 and 88 rand. And the, uh, the additional amount that's included there is um, an amount drawn, uh, is, is caused by an accrual of interest against the amounts deposited by the Free State Government against various Estina accounts. Uh, OK, no. Thank you, Mr. Holton. I was looking for the 287. I, I've now seen it. Um, yeah, at two. So, so, so there's approximately 7 million worth of interest that is added to the 280 million that Correct. comes direct from the Free State Government. Mm. Correct. Mm. Yes. Uh, and what happened to that 287 million? Uh, of this, uh, 169 million, 532,396 rand and 82 cents was transferred to Gateway Limited Offshore. Um, 83 million 703,664 rand and 32 uh, was transferred to Gateway from a Cedar Standard Bank account, which I've already mentioned. And 85 million 828 rand, 730, uh, sorry, 85 million 828,732 rand and 50 cents is transferred to Gateway from a Cedar's F&B current account. Of this, um, the two largest recipients of funds, uh, once Gateway has dispersed it, 3.330, uh, uh, sorry, let me rather rephrase that in the, the, without a zero there, um, $3,330,700 is transferred to the benefit of Linkway Trading. And the amount can, there should can actually I, be... Can I just pause there? You're talking dollars, not rands. That's correct, dollars. Mm. Uh, and an amount which we've corrected on the page of relief is uh, 3... Uh, $3.35 million to Oak Bay. Uh, following that, um, 59 uh, million 505, 875 rand is transferred to Vargafield, um, of which 52 million 726,348 rand was paid from Athena Standard Bank account and 6 million 770 sorry, 6,779,256.95 was transferred from Estina's F&P account. A further uh, 34,563,580 rand and 12 cents was transferred to the South African Revenue Service to settle Estina's VAT obligations. Therefore, we could... Uh, uh, continue. Therefore, we can see that of the total amount paid in by the Free State Government, um, a total of 263,000, uh, 
sorry, 263,601,851 rand and 94 cents was paid out cumulatively to Gateway Limited, Varga Field, and uh, South African Revenue Services for VAT payments connected to Estina. Thus, of the funds that are deposited by the Free State Government, we can trace uh, a mere 21,746,000. Uh, 367,245 uh, going out to the NADI system on the 24th of September. That's correct. So, so just to, um, to clarify, um, on the, it's a little bit difficult to see on the screen here, but this is the, I've now moved to a different sheet in the Excel spread, Excel workbook. I'm now on the cash sheet, um, and I'm on the cash sheet obviously because they're now transacting in cash. And then we can see here on the 24th of September 2013, uh, we see an amount of 367,245 dirham, and it's described as Nadi exchange uh, remittance. While we're on this page, can I ask you to flag also the second payment to the Nadi exchange? Uh, certainly, so that, that occurs at row 31 directly thereafter, uh, and that is uh, 367,255 dirham uh, that's paid on the 25th of September 2013. And if you go back to 681, can you show where that's reflected on your diagram? Certainly. Uh, that is this transfer going down from Global Corporation's Bank of Baroda Dubai account into the cash given to Nadi Hawala. I should mention that 367,255 dirham is roughly equivalent to $100,000. Uh. Is that diagram the one that appears? It's not the one that appears at 671, is it? 681, Chair. 681. 681. Yes, okay. Um, and just to close that loop on the ledgers, uh, can you go back to page 350? and show where the cash, the 367,255, how that cash is uh, created, because it's come out of the, your diagram says it comes out of the Global Corporation Bank of Baroda Dubai Bank account. So what we see here at um, row 258 on the spreadsheet on the screen, um, the first party is, is global. Um, the data is the 24th of September 2013. Uh, there's a description called depot conv, which I have never really been able to ascertain the exact meaning, but could mean deposit convert or something like that. Um, and then further to the right here, we see uh, a 367,450 Durham withdrawal uh, from uh, Global's Bank of Baroda Durham account. Thank you. So we've now finished, we go back to six, we've finished six, eight, the diagram on 681, which is step four of your uh, description of these tranches. And we now need to go to step five on page 682. might uh, need to take a, a break. Uh, As, uh, how far are we from finishing for the day? Chair, in truth, where we finish, uh, we, uh, now is as good a time as any to finish because oh. this illustration, we, we can't do this for all for eight everything. diagrams, yes, but what yeah. we will do is we will give yeah. a, a detailed referenced copy of each diagram so that all of that information is there. Yes. Um, and then what we can do early tomorrow morning, or yes. at the start of tomorrow morning, is we can very quickly just yes. talk higher level about where this money goes, where it ends, and how it moves. Yes. Okay, but in terms of your plan, 
when we, will be convenient we will stop. finish with an hour tomorrow morning or, or maybe an yeah. hour and a half tomorrow morning we will finish the Astina money flows yes okay and then we will move over to the transnet money flows yes. which will which will we will we'll have comfortable time to finish yes. given the time available for us tomorrow yeah. and Monday evening and even Tuesday evening if we need yes. it okay well uh, I take it that that means it might be convenient to adjourn this evidence now, or would you like that we I, take I, some I, break I think it, it's as good a time, it is as, as convenient a time as, time as yes. any now to... Okay, no, that, that, that's fine. Maybe we should do that then when, then you start the next step tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and then we continue, so we can take the break. I mean, we, if it mattered, we could have continued uh, for some time before um, I take Chair, I wonder if we, if we yeah. take, if we now start moving high level, not, yes. not uh, maybe we should finish tranche zero. Okay, okay Because we're in right. the middle of it. Okay, maybe, maybe let's take a five minutes, ten minutes break. Certain. And then we, 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 we can continue and then stop at a certain time. Then I can um, uh, uh, hear the evening witness. Oh, oh Chair, if there is yes. an evening witness waiting, then we shouldn't, I don't want inconvenience. Yeah. We, can, we can tailor our time tomorrow to... Yes. Uh, no, 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 that, that, that's fine, but the evening team knows that I said we could start at four o'clock, they should be here at four o'clock, but we could start at five or up as four, so they, they, uh, there's no, that no, understanding. No, no, from my perspective, Chair, whether we finish now or in it does not half an hour's time makes no yes. real difference. I, I wouldn't okay, want to inconvenience. Okay, then maybe the let's, let's adjourn for the day in terms of this witness, and then we, re we continue tomorrow. Then I'll take a break. When I come back, I will start with the evening session. Thank you, yeah. Chair. Yeah. And, oh, and may okay. I then be excused and, and, for the rest of the day? <laughs> <laughs> um, then, then let's uh, let's uh, adjourn. We'll adjourn, Mr. Holden, and then tomorrow we start at ten as normal. We we'll start at yeah. ten, yeah. So we'll adjourn for the uh, for the day, and uh, you'll come back tomorrow. Okay. Um, the adjournment will be about fifteen or so minutes to enable the uh, evening team to set up, and thereafter we will continue with the evening evening session. We are Jen. It's all right.